Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In today's session, let's discuss about the Quit India movement. So after crisp departure, Gandhi he framed a resolution calling for the British withdrawal and a non-violent, non-corporation movement against any Japanese invasion in India. The Congress Working Committee meeting at Varda, which was held on July 14, 1942, it accepted the idea of a struggle. But what was the reason for the struggle now? So the reasons were several. The failure of the Crips mission to solve the constitutional deadlock. It exposed Britain's unchanged attitude on constitutional advance and it made clear that any more silence would be tantamount to accepting the British right to decide the fate of the Indians without consulting them. And there was a popular discontent because of rising prices and the shortage of rice, salt and so many other things. And because of the factors such as commandering of boats in Bengal and Orissa and there was a fear that Japanese advance in India. So new reverses suffered by the British in Southeast Asia and an imminent British collapse, it enhanced popular willingness to give expression to discontent. And by the time the Japanese troops, they approached the borders of India. And their popular faith in the stability of the British rule, it was so low that people were withdrawing the deposits from the banks and from post offices. So the manner in which the British evacuated from Southeast Asia, leaving the subjects to their faith and the route of European power by an Asian power, it shattered the prestige of whites and the British behavior towards the Indian subjects in Southeast Asia. It exposed a racist kind of attitude of, the, of those white rulers. The leadership wanted to condition the masses for a possible Japanese invasion. The Quit India Resolution In July 1942, the Congress Working Committee, which met at Varda, it resolved that it would authorize Gandhi to take charge of the non-violent mass movement. And the resolution is generally referred as Quit India Resolution. So as proposed by Jawaharlal Nehru and seconded by Sardar Vallabhai Patel, it was to be approved by the All India Congress Committee meeting in Bombay in August. And the Quit India Resolution, it was ratified and the Congress meeting at Gowalia Tank, Bombay on August 8, 1942. The meeting, it resolved to demand an immediate end to British rule in India. Declare commitment of free India to defend itself against all types of fascism and imperialism. To form a provincial government of India after British withdrawal. Sanction a civil disobedience movement against British rule. And to sanction a civil disobedience movement against a British rule. And Gandhi, he was named the leader of this struggle. He was named as the leader of Quit India movement. So before the Quit India movement began, Gandhi gave certain general instructions to different sections of the society. So Gandhi's special instructions, it were spelled out at Gowalia tank meeting. But actually it was not issued. They were, uh, they were just directed at various sections of the society. So for government servants, Gandhi instructed, do not resign, but declare your allegiance to the Congress. For soldiers, he instructed to not to leave the army, but not to fire on compatriots. For students, he instructed, if you are confident, then just leave the studies. For peasants, he said that if Jamindars are anti-government, pay mutually agreed rent. And if Jamindars are pro-government, do not pay rent. Princess For princess, he instructed that 
support the masses and accept sovereignty of your people for princely states people he instructed support the ruler only if he is anti government and declare yourself to be a part of indian nation so gandhi followed up with a now famous exhortation here is a mantra a short one that i give you he said and you may imprint it on your hearts and let every breath of yours give expression to it the mantra that was given by gandhi during the quit india movement was do or die so we shall either free india or die in the attempt so this was a statement given by gandhi so we shall not leave to see the perpetuations of our slavery the participation of quit india movement it was on many levels youths women's workers peasants government officials muslims the communist even the muslim leagues hindu mahasabha and the princely states everyone participated in quit india movement so there was a repression from the government side martial law was not applied the repression was severe and agitating crowds were lathi charged at that time and tear gas were fired upon and the number of those killed is estimated to be around 10000 members were killed during the quit india movement and the press was muzzled the military took over many cities police and secret service reigned supreme and the rebellious villages were fined heavily and in many villages mass flogging was also done and according to the estimate quit india movement was left without leaders as there were no restraint and violence became a common thing main storm centers of the movement were in eastern united provinces bihar midnapur maharashtra and karnataka students workers and even peasants they were the backbone of the movement loyalty to the government it suffered a considerable erosion and the movement established the truth that it was no longer possible to rule india without the wishes of indians and the great significance of this movement quit india movement was that it placed a demand for independence on the immediate agenda of national movement and after quit india there could be no retreat and in this struggle the common people they displayed unparalleled heroism and militancy the represent they faced it was the most brutal and the circumstances under which resistance was offered it were most adverse Gandhi fast so in uh, february 1943 gandhi started a fast as an answer to an exhortation by the government of condemned violence the fast it was directed against the violence of the state the popular response to the news of the fast it was an immediate overwhelming so protest were organized at home and also in a brought through hurdles demonstrations and strikes three members of vice roys executive councils they resigned the fast achieved the following public moral it was raised anti british feeling was heightened and an opportunity was provided for political activity government's high handedness was exposed and gandhi got the better of his opponents and he refused to oblige by dying and on march 23rd 1943 pakistan day was observed there was a famine of 1943 so this was a horror and inconvenience of war which increased by the famine of 94- 1943 the worst affected areas were southwest bengal around uh, 1.5 to 
थ्री मिलियन पीपल पेरिश्ड इन दिस बेसिकली इट वॉज अ मैन मेड फेमाइन द एपिडमिक्स लाइक का मलेरिया कॉलरा एंड स्मॉल पॉक्स माल न्यूट्रिशन एंड स्टारवेशन बिकॉज ऑफ ऑल दिस इफेक्ट्स दे ऑल पेरिश्ड द फंडामेंटल कॉसेज ऑफ दिस फेमाइन वेयर the need to feed a vast army in diverted foodstuffs rice import from burma and southeast asia it was also stopped and the famine got aggravated by gross mismanagement and deliberate profiteering rationing methods were belated and they were confined only to the big cities so meanwhile efforts were on to solve the ongoing constitutional crisis and some individuals they tried to come up with constitutional proposals and at that time raj gopal chari he came with one formula before discussing about his formula let's see who is raj gopal chari so he was a veteran congress leader okay he prepared a formula for congress league cooperation in 1944 and it was tacit acceptance of league's demand for pakistan and gandhi he supported the formula of rajgopal chari and the main points in cr's plan that is c rajgopal chari in short we call him as cr muslim league to endorse congress demand for independence and league to cooperate with congress in forming a provisional government at the center and after the end of the war the entire population of muslim majority areas in the northwest and northeast india to decide by plebiscite whether or not to form a separate sovereign state so in case of acceptance of partition agreement should be made jointly for safeguarding defense commerce communications and so on the above terms to be operative only if england transferred full powers to india and there was a objection for raj gopal chari's formula jinna he wanted the congress to accept a two nation theory he wanted only the muslims on northwest and northeast to out in the plebiscite and not the entire population he also opposed the idea of a common center the congress was ready to cooperate with the league for the independence of indian union and the league did not care for independence of the union it was only interested in a separate nation desai likhat pact so the efforts continued to end the end the deadlock bulabai desai was the leader of congress party in the central legislative assembly so he met likhat ali khan he was the deputy leader of muslim league in that assembly and both of them they came with a draft proposal for the formation of an interim government at the center and that consists of an equal number of persons nominated by the congress and the league in the central legislature and 20% it should be reserved seats for minorities no settlement could be reached between the congress and the league on this lines but the fact was that to sort a parity between congress and the league and it was de- decided upon far reaching consequences wave well plan so although the war in europe it came to end by may 1945 the japanese threat it still remained and the conservative government in britain it led by churchill it was keen to reach a solution on constitutional question in india the viceroy lord wavell he was permitted to start negotiation with indian leaders so congress leaders were released from the jails in june 1945 so the idea of wavel it was to reconstruct the governor general executive council pending the preparation of a new constitution and for this purpose a conference was convened by the viceroy lord wavel at shimla in june 
1945 and the main proposals of Wavell plan were with the exception of governor general and commander in chief all members of the executive council were to be indians caste hindus and muslims they were to have equal representation the reconstructed council was to function as an interim government with the framework of 1935 act so the governor general was to exercise his veto on advice of ministers representatives of different parties were to submit a joint list to viceroy for nomination to executive council so if a joint list was not possible then separate list should be submitted so this was a wavell's plan the indian national army and shivash chandra bose shivash chandra bose he always showed a militant streak and reacted violently to any insult of indians by the europeans he passed indian civil services examination securing a fourth position but he resigned from the service in 1921 to join a struggle for freedom by becoming a member of the congress so his political guru was chitrandan das he became a mayor of calcutta in 1923 he was jailed many times by the british and once it became clear to subhash chandra bose that he could not follow gandhi's way but that the congress was determined to follow gandhi subhash chandra bose decided to go his own way to fight for independence so in march 1940 bose convened an anti compromise conference at ramgarh so it was a joint effort of the forward bloc and kisan sabha and it was resolved at the conference that a worldwide struggle it should be launched on april 6 which was the first day of national week with a call to the people not to help the imperialistic war with any resource like men money or materials so bose called for resistance to be offered in all forms of exploitation of indian resources for imperial cause there was an enthusiastic participation by the people in the struggle that was launched on april 6th and bose was arrested in july when he protested and tried to launch a satyagraha against a proposed monument for holwell in calcutta and he was released from the prison and placed under house arrest in december 1940 after a hunger strike and in january 1941 it was reported that bose was escaped on jan 26 1941 bose reached peshwar under a pseudo name ziauddin helped by bagatram and later it was heard that he had left india to supplement from outside the struggle going on at home so he reported to have approached russia for help in indian struggle for freedom from the britain but in june 1941 russia joined the allies in the war which disappointed bose so he then went to germany bose met hitler under the pseudo name orlando mazato with the help of hitler the freedom army that which is also called mukti sena was formed and this consisted of all the prisoners of the war and those prisoners were of indian origin captured by germany and italy dresden germany was made the office of freedom army so bose came to be called as netaji by the people of germany so he gave a famous slogan called jai hind from the free india center germany 
So he began regular broadcast from Berlin Radio in Jan 1942. So this enthused Indians. And in early 1943, he left Germany and he travelled by German and later by Japanese submarines to reach Japan and then Singapore in July of that same year. So he was to take over command of the Indian independence movement from Rashbury Bose. But that was the second phase of Indian National Army. So then what would be the first phase of Indian National Army? Let's discuss about it. So origin of Indian National Army. The idea of creating an army out of Indian prisoners of war, it was originally the idea of Mohan Singh. He was an Indian army officer and he decided not to join the retreating British army in Malaya. So Mohan Singh, he decided to turn to Japan for help. So the Japanese, they, till then they encouraged Indian civilian to form anti-British organization. Mohan Singh asked for Indian prisoners of war and Japanese, they handed over the Indian prisoners of war to Mohan Singh who tried to recruit them in an Indian National Army. And after the fall of Singapore, several prisoners of war were ready to join Mohan Singh. But by the end of 1942, 40,000 men were ready to join the Indian National Army. And it was intended that Indian National Army would go into action only on the invitation of Indian National Congress and the people of India. And the move to form this army, it had been seen by many as check against the misconduct of Japanese against Indians in Southeast Asia and as a bulwark against a possible future Japanese occupation of India. Now the Indian National Army, it got a boost with the outbreak of Quit India movement in India. In September 1942, the first division of Indian National Congress was formed with uh, 16,300 men. And with the Japanese contemplating an Indian invasion, the idea of an armed wing of Indian National Army, it seemed relevant to them. But soon there was a serious differences emerged between Indian Army officers led by Mohan Singh and the Japanese over the role that was played by Indian National Army. And actually the Japanese, they wanted to token force of 2000 only, whereas Mohan Singh wanted to rise a much larger army. Mohan Singh was taken into custody by the Japanese. And that was the first phase. And in the second phase, with the arrival of Shubhash Chandra Bose in Singapore, but before that, in June 1943, Shubhash Chandra Bose, he reached Tokyo. He met the Japanese Prime Minister, Tojo there. So the role of Rashbury Bose, another great freedom fighter. Rashbury Bose, he was an another great freedom fighter. He fled to Japan in 1915 following the failed revolutionary activities. So in Japan, Rashbury Bose, he became a naturalized citizen. So he made lot of effort in getting the Japanese interested in Indian independence movement. So that very easily, at the very early itself, he was impressed by Shubhas Chandra Bose. So when the Indian National Army was formed by Mohan Singh in Singapore, uh, Rashbury Bose, he was greatly excited and he left Tokyo for Southeast Asia. And it was at a conference in Bangkok that it was decided to place the Indian National Army under an Independence Act League and the chairman would be Rashbury Bose himself. And when Shubhas Chandra Bose, he sought by the Japanese to lead the Indian National Army, he was ready for it. And he went to Singapore and he met Rashbury Bose and later 
he happily transferred the control and leadership of indian independence league and indian national army to shubhas chandra bose in july 1943 so on the organizational spade work done by rashbari bose that shubhas bose he could build up an indian national army and shubhas chandra bose he became a supreme commander of indian national army on august 25th and on october 21st 1943 shubhas chandra bose he formed a provincial government for free india at singapore with hc chatterji ma ayer lakshmi nadan and so on the famous slogan was that give me blood i will give you freedom was raised in malaya and the indian headquarters it was shifted to rangoon in january 1944 and the army recruits were to march from there with the cry called chalo delhi and on november 6 1943 andaman and nicobar islands was given by the japanese army to indian national army and the islands were renamed as shahid deep and swaraj deep on july 6 1944 shubhas chandra bose addressed mahatma gandhi as the father of nation from the azad hind radio and the first person to call gandhi as the father of the nation was shubhas chandra bose and he asked for gandhi's blessing for india's last war of independence one indian national army battalion commanded by shah nawaz was allowed to accompany the japanese army to indo burma front and to participate in the campaign the indians received discriminatory treatment from the japanese and this included being denied rations and arms and being made to do manual work for japanese units and this disgusted the indian national army units and azad hind fauz he crossed the burma border and he stood on indian soil on march 18 1944 and the indian national army units they subsequently advanced up to kohima and as well as imphal on april 14th colonel malik of bahadur group they hoisted indian national flag for the first time on the indian mainland at moirang which is in manipur so after hoisting the flag enthusiastic cries were heard like jai hind and netaji zindabad and for 3 months the indian national army it carried out military administration duties at moirang in manipur but then the allied forces they reclaimed the territory and indian national army it met the same fate as the japanese and all brigades they began their withdrawal on july 18th the steady japanese retreat thereafter it squashed any hopes of indian national army liberating the nation and on august 5th 1945 the surrender of japan in the second world war it took place with this the indian national army also surrendered and on august 18 1945 reportedly shubhas chandra bose died mysteriously in an air crash at taiwan but when the indian national army the prisoners of war were brought back to india after the war to be court martialed a powerful movement emerged in their defense and uh, this is all about quit india movement and indian national army so in the next session let's continue our discussion on modern india thank you